G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. In this episode, we're going to look at the news from the last week across the camera industry. Not all of it, because there's a lot, but some of the highlights. Starting with Sony announcing some exciting new firmware updates for Sony users, including updates for the A1, the A93, the A7S 3 and the A74. Now, this is awfully exciting, and I think to me, probably the most compelling feature for these updates is the fact that we now have image authentication via the C2PA standard. As Sony states, it's a next step to ensuring image authentication. It's super exciting that these updates have arrived. The Sony A1 has been in the market for over three years, and now we have the arrival of firmware 2.0. But wait. There's a little bit more. Just days after the A1 firmware has been announced and launched, the A1 firmware has been pulled. And it's been pulled because it's causing problems on cameras. So on March 29th, Sony announced that for some A1s, they're now no longer able to connect to the network. So due to that issue, they have pulled the update completely. Look, these things happen. It's the way it goes, and hopefully that update will be reworked and we get a 2.01 coming sometime soon. As for two of these four cameras, they're pretty major updates. I'm just going to put the updates here on the screen rather than going through all four cameras and all of their updates. Just to recap, I do think the most exciting part of that is the image authentication. This is something that all manufacturers will just simply have to do moving forwards as we continue to plow on into the AI universe that we're living in now. With images being created by AI that are becoming harder and harder to tell by the human eye. This is really important. Well done, Sony, for getting there. Last week, we talked about the rumor that Sigma was going to release a 50mm 1.2 for E and for L mount. Just days later, it actually happened. This lens is here. It looks very compelling. I'd love to see this appear on the Z mount as well, and on the RF mount for that matter. At this point in time, I don't know how good this lens is. More affordable options for 1.2, I just think is a great idea and allows creators to create. This lens is coming in at sub 1500 US dollars. I'm really excited to see what it looks like. And Sigma, if you happen to be listening here in Australia, I would love to be able to test out this lens. I do have two Sony E-mount cameras, so no problem. I can check them out, and one of them is a high megapixel one. So no problems at all. Just in case you missed it, although it'd be pretty impossible to miss, last week we got two fantastic new lenses, native Z-mount lenses for Z-mount. The first one is this one right here, the ridiculous 28 to 400 f4 to f8. Check out my review right here about this exciting lens. And the other lens, just in case you missed it, is the 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 G2 from Tamron for Z mount. A lot of people are super excited about this lens. It comes in at 999 US dollars. It might be a great option for you. Also, check out my video over here about that one. And in further Sony news, have they released yet the largest sensor with the most megapixels that we've ever seen? This is 247 million effective pixels in a physical size that is almost 65 millimeters wide. This sensor is a rolling shutter sensor, which seems to have up to 16 bits of information. And as we can see here, it runs at a maximum of 12.4 frames in 12-bit, 10.5 frames in 14-bit, and 5.3 frames when at 16-bit. Now, at this point in time, there is absolutely no indication that this is going to end up in any camera because it's twice the physical size, give or take, of sensors, 35mm sensors we have today. Sony make a lot of sensors that never end up in cameras. They're used for industrial purposes. But... Some of them do, and who knows, maybe this will one day. Medium format, Hasselblad, Phase 1, anybody? 
Seven Artisans also have a new lens which is coming my way. I will have a review out for that sometime soon. It is their first autofocus lens and it will be on Z mount among other mounts. And it is a 50 millimeter 1.8. That has also been announced this week. I look forward to showing you more from that lens. Now, some people get excited about pretty much anything. They'll, they'll get excited about a storm in a teacup and, uh, well, you know, sometimes we, we, in life we just don't have time for every storm in every teacup. And that's okay. The thing I'm about to mention, it's not a storm. And it's also not a teacup. Yes, Nikon did release a new update for the Z62 and the Z72. But, users, I didn't want to make a video about it just to get you excited, just so that you could get angry. It is an absolutely super duper minor update which is bug fixes. That's all there is to it. Straight away, you're asking the question, will there be more? Will anything else happen? There is a very, very clear differentiation between XP6 and XP7. They are worlds apart. And to guess, there's something like four or five years of difference between them time-wise. But it's possible that the XP6 is significantly older than that and the technology in it is more akin to the DSLR days. Whereas there's absolutely no question in my mind now, almost two and a half years since the Z9 shipped, that the XP7, which I'm confident is absolutely a multi-core chip, like the type that you would find in your iPhone, where there are 20, 30, 40 cores, I would say the difference between an XP7 and an XP6 is absolutely massive. Now, why am I talking about the processors? Because that's the difference between a Z6 II and say a Z8 or a Z9 or even a ZF. Now, if you get your hands on a ZF, you can straight away, and for those that say own a Z6 II and a ZF, like I do, you absolutely straight away, you can feel the difference absolutely everywhere across the camera, whether it's how the EVF is kind of functioning and reacting and behaving and giving you feedback and also in the focus system. But also clearly we've got a completely different operating system running on the two different cameras. So overall, what I'm trying to say here with all of this, is there more that's gonna come out of the XP6? Anything's possible, I don't know. Is it likely that Nikon are gonna to continue to do R&D to try and push what are now four, almost four year old cameras who are now naturally reaching their cycle point? And the bottom line is, from my perspective, that they've pushed it out for this long and they are now nearing their four year cycle. Let's face it, we are only hearing rumors, and I'm not talking about interviews with Nikon executives, we're only hearing rumors about the Z63, that's it. I haven't seen or heard a rumor about any other camera of late. So to the best of my guesstimating, forecasting, the most likely camera to come next is probably a Z63, but then who knows because Nikon just bought red, so anything could happen. But let's assume it is the Z63. Then you have to ask yourself the question, if you've got a Z63 in the market and it's going to be a far, like far superior camera, we have an idea of what it's already gonna be based on looking at the ZF. And I can only imagine it's a ZF plus more and if you look at how Nikon line up the ZF in the range, it actually sits below the Z5. It sits between the APS-C cameras and the Z5. So if that's how they think about it, we've got the ZF, the Z5, and you know, obviously the Z5 II will come at some point, presumably. And then you've got the Z6 III, which will go in that next slot. Just on that order that they are putting things in, the Z6 III is going to be a superior camera to the ZF. And the ZF is already amazing. Now, the only thing about the ZF to keep in mind is, is they might not have put the absolute bleeding edge of sensor technology in the ZF. Whereas I do suspect we might get more of a sensor in the Z6 III. And ultimately the conclusion of all of that is, in my mind, is this. A Z6 III, I think, is going to, in some aspects of its capabilities, far exceed a Z6 II. And thus, how much time and effort do you want to put into the older one, which they might be able to improve, you know, 4%, 5%, 10%, 20%.
Who knows? A and might I just add, for the majority of use cases, it needs no further improvement because I kind of think when it comes to, say, low light focusing or focusing as fast as a Z8, a Z9 or a ZF, I just don't think that's ever going to happen. I just don't think it can ever get there because, as I already discussed, the difference between the XP6 and the XP7, I think, is epic. Now, we were told on launch of the XP7 7 that it is 10 times faster than the two XP6s. If you keep that in mind and you imagine what the Z6 III might be, the new tech has so much more potential, space, wriggle room, much further than it can grow, and out of the box, 10 times faster. As a company, you just look at your resources and you kind of go, do we put the same amount of resources in trying to squeeze 5 or 10% out of XP6, or do we put the same resources into making the Z6 III just even better with more firmware updates, more features, and quite frankly, from a company's perspective and me as a user, yes, sure, you've got to spend more money and that's that's life. You know, we largely, most of us live in the paradigm of capitalism. That's how it works. If you want the best and the fastest, you pay for it. You buy it. That's the world we live in. I think the Z6 III will be far superior, just like a Z8 is so much more than a Z7 II. And it is. There is so many things that a Z8 can do that a Z7 II just simply cannot. And I don't even think that story, the Z8 story, is over yet as to how far it might be pushed across its life, which is a minimum of another three and a bit years. If I had to choose squeezing a little bit more out of Z6 II or having those same resources applied to Z6 III, and pushing it as far as we can, I know which I would choose. Finally, after that long analysis, I wanted to talk about a video from our dear friend, Steve Perry. He's a very serious and accurate gentleman, a superb bird photographer. He knows a lot about all of the camera systems, whether it's Sony, Nikon or Canon. And he is loving the changes that have come to how you control AF. And Nikon have created a new mode called Cycle AF. It allows you very quickly to change through your AF area modes and whatever modes you want to go to. And Steve is stating, and his video is titled, I'm pretty sure, Game Changer. I don't shoot a lot of birds, but I do shoot other things. And I do often want to change between a, a full frame and it's just a smaller area and so on. And I get it. Just one tap. And as he was saying, depending on how many you add to the list, it might be three taps from here to here to go to this one and two taps to get to that one and so on. And it's just really quick. Like it's like one second. doesn't matter whether you've got to do two or three or four. It's like something like one second to go between them. Nikon is not only continuing to improve the autofocus, but they're improving the usability or the ergonomics of the autofocus. And this is making what we do better. Because we all know you can have a catch-all autofocus. You can do that. But it is at times better to have a certain type of autofocus depending on how backgrounds change and whether there's backlight in the image, whether there's foliage, whether there's too many people. Like if you're photographing somebody in a crowd, for example, and suddenly there's a sea of faces, but you're just still after one particular face, well, you can just have a very small slither or a small box, quickly tap over to that, and you're still running and you don't even have to worry about the other people. Steve Perry, he's calling this a game changer. Love it. Good work, Steve, and good work, Nikon. In regards to the RED and Nikon news, which has been absolutely massive for almost the last month, and I've got a great video coming up about RED here in Australia and talking with an industry representative. It's a great one. Watch out for it coming soon. Also, Nikon Australia put out a statement saying, we are deeply grateful for the overwhelming support and anticipation we have received after the announcement of the RED acquisition. We are planning that there will be no changes to the RED's current product lineup, the partners and the relationship with the dealers. RED will continue to support its policies with warranty, repair, service, customer service and overall product support. 
So across the board, whether it's out of Japan or out of Nikon Australia here, and as I said, there are red cameras being sold here, and I had an interview with the people that handle all of that. It's a super interesting interview. And we actually talked about this subject, and this interview was conducted over two weeks ago. It's just been a busy two weeks, but coming soon, we talked about the fact that, yeah, we thought it would be best for things to stay as they are, and now we have a formal statement pertaining to exactly that. Super exciting times for Nikon users. There is so much going on in the world. Obviously, we still think that things are going to happen for the Olympics. Whatever Z is going to happen, whatever Alpha is going to happen, and whatever R happens from Canon. Fuji are obviously making big waves with their X106. Panasonic, they're always working on something and so much more. Let me know your favourite piece of news for the last week or so, something that I've missed or any of these articles. I'd love to know what you think about what's happening in the world around us. But needless to say, technology marches on and wherever we want to step on or off the technology train, whether we're happy with our film cameras, our DSLRs, our mirrorless cameras, our full frame cameras, our APS-C cameras, our micro four thirds cameras, or maybe even our medium format cameras, everything is all good. You need to do you and that's all that matters. All right, it's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would. I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All righty, bye for now.